I hope you're having a great day. Today, I want to talk about calcification. We hear about this term, calcification in the heart, a calcium score for the heart. We hear about kidney stones. We hear about gallbladder stones. We hear about sore muscles and tendons and joints and something called calcification. What exactly is this? And what can we do about it? There's a lot that you can do about it. And it comes down to, again, the basics and simplicity. We need to understand that there are many contributing factors towards gallstones, towards kidney stones. But what are these stones made up of? When you break them down in a lab, a lot of them contain calcium. But where should calcium be? Calcium should be in our bones. Calcium has to be in our bones, not in our muscles and our joints and our tendons. Whatever required amount needs to be there will be there. But we shouldn't have an excess of it. That's having calcium in the wrong place. The same thing with the heart. A lot of the buildup of plaque, a lot of the arterial, you know, uh, debris that basically causes the hardening of the arteries is a lot of calcification. So today we're going to understand an important vitamin, vitamin K. It's a fat soluble vitamin with many, many biological functions in the human body. If you go back to school, biology class, or even go back into nutrition school, you'll understand that the basic role of vitamin K is coagulation of the blood to prevent, you know, bleed outs to thicken your blood. And that's the importance of it. There are two kinds of vitamin K. You have vitamin K1 and K2. K1 is primarily found in green leafy vegetables, a couple of fruits like kiwi. You'll find it in avocado. You'll find it in dried prunes. You'll find it in very, uh, in a lot of cruciferous vegetables like your broccoli or your kale, your radish, your cabbage. And your vitamin K2 is found in animal produce, like your chicken, you'll find it in beef. And of course, if you're vegetarian, you will find it in fermented foods. So both these forms of calcium, uh, of vitamin K, are extremely important. Vitamin K is required to basically stimulate and synthesize a hormone called osteocalin. Now, I'm just going to get a little bit technical over here. It's extremely important that all of us understand how the body works. For the longest time, we've thought about calcium and bones. More calcium, better bones. But that's the biggest myth, the biggest myth. In fact, India and the United States of America are the, U, are the largest consumers of calcium supplements. And India and the U.S. have the high amount, highest amount of osteoporosis. Something's not working, right? You know, there's a lot of dishonesty in the supplement industry as well. You pull out a little bit of science, you show people calcium is important for bones, and then all of a sudden you have everyone taking calcium. It's very rare for me when I come across patients and their blood reports to find out patients who have an excess of calcium in their body, a deficiency of calcium. Most people either have the right levels of calcium or they have an excess of calcium, which is not a good thing. That is why I keep talking about vitamin D3. If we have low levels of vitamin D3, we cannot facilitate. Vitamin D3 is like a carrier of calcium into your bones. So if I have low vitamin D3 and I'm just going on taking calcium and su supplements or having calcium-rich food, I'm actually going to create other problems in my body which are not too good, especially for my heart, my kidney, my gallbladder, and of course, physical pains like tendons or, you know, uh, spurs and stuff like that. So coming back to vitamin K, if I have a deficiency of vitamin K, osteocalin is a hormone that is produced by something called osteoblasts. Now, what are osteoblasts? Very important for all of us to understand. Osteoblasts are the cells that form your bones. You know, every part of our body is formed from cells, your hair, your eyes, your organs, everything, including your bones. So my osteoblasts, okay, produce something called osteocalin. Now, osteocalin needs vitamin K. What is the function of osteocalin? If I don't have the right amount of osteocalin, uh, vitamin K cannot do its function. So technically what happens is if I have low vitamin K, osteocalin cannot facilitate calcium into your bones. And that's not enough. Once calcium gets into your bones, it needs to bind to your bones. It needs to bind. It's extremely important to understand this because we can go on taking supplements, but strong bones is when calcium binds to your bone. Now, for example, I, there's something else I want to talk about. Another protein called MGP. What is MGP? Basically matrix GLA protein. All right. You need vitamin K for this protein. What is the function of this protein? This function of this protein is basically to prevent the accumulation of calcium 
in the arteries of your heart, your liver, your kidney, your gallbladder, your muscles, your tendons, and your joints. So now uh, MGP, the protein MGP and osteocalin, the hormone, both require vitamin K to function. So if I have low vitamin K, osteocalin cannot do the job of binding calcium into your bones. And MGP, the protein, cannot do the job of keeping calcium out of your arteries, your bones, and your organs where it's not supposed to be. So a deficiency of vitamin K can cause all of these problems. Today, modern medicine, and I don't have a problem with any of these, we're just treating symptoms. Had a heart attack, okay, get onto a statin, do this, do that, all of these things. We're not understanding the role of vitamins and minerals through your food or through supplementation when required. Now, we need to understand one thing clearly. I'm going to repeat it. If calcium is not getting into your bones and binding into your bones, it's getting into your soft tissue. It's not meant to be there in your soft tissue. It's not meant to be in your arteries. It's not meant to be in your kidney, in your liver, muscles, tendons, and joints. That's when we start to have all these pains. A lot of bone spurs are also made up of calcification and other contributing factors. People have fibromyalgia. While there are so many, so many different causes of fibromyalgia, we also need to understand that if there is calcification in your body, a lot of this calcification causes these kind of pains in the elbow and the shoulder and the joint. Everything is fine symptomatically. Now, how do you check for calcification? Your doctor may put you through an x-ray, sometimes a CT, MRI is not always the best, an ultrasound. You can also look at your blood levels. Your blood levels gives you a lot of information if you use it the right way. Why do I have elevated calcium levels in my blood report? I shouldn't have elevated calcium. I should have calcium within the range. If I have elevated, that means it's not getting absorbed. It's not getting bound. It's freely moving in my body and it's going to attach to soft tissue. I can also look at my alkaline phosphate levels, especially if I have a liver problem. I can also look at my CRP markers because sometimes calcification can cause an increase in your C-reactive protein, which is your inflammatory markers. I can also look at my parathyroid hormone, my, t my PTH, because that shows you a dysregulation in your calcium. So there are many reports. If you think you have calcification, you can go to your doctor. Now, how do we solve this problem? Vitamin K. You need to eat a balanced diet. You need to understand that you don't need too much of vitamin K because it's a fat-soluble vitamin. It's stored in the fat of your body. So number one, we get it from our green leafy vegetables, our prunes, our dried dates. We get it from avocados. We get it from kiwis. Keep it simple. Your green vegetables are great for you. Vitamin K2, which is a powerful form. If you're vegetarian, mostly you will have to supplement unless you're really on point with your fermented foods. If you're a non-vegetarian, you'll get it from your chicken. The best part of the chicken is the thigh and the leg of the chicken. The thigh and the leg. Dark meat is excellent for you. Your beef, it would be your grass-fed any day, any day over your processed beef because grass-fed will have more vitamin K2 as well. If not, you can take a supplement. There are many, many, many of my patients that will be on a K2 supplement, cycling it 20 days on, 20 days off. Please don't take this advice. I know these people. I'm just giving you an example. Please don't blindly follow. Okay, do it the right way. Take a consult from your professionals if you need to because understand if you overdose on vitamin K, it's going to become toxic within you because it's being stored. It's not a water-soluble vitamin. It's a fat-soluble vitamin. But most elderly people will have less K as you age, you deplete it. And that's why when you look at your supplementation, you've got to be smart about your supplementation. You'll never see these supplements advertised on Instagram. You'll see the things that make quick money, that can brainwash you. More protein shakes, more muscle building formulas, more uh, losing weight formulas. But the things that need your body and heart to function every day is never advertised because they don't cost too much of money. So the important part is if you're a heart patient, especially, and you've had calcification, you need to be on vitamin K2 and you need to be eating vitamin K rich foods. Okay, if you've had gallbladder problems, if you had pancreatitis problems, if you've had liver problems, fatty liver, all of these things, a lot of joint pains, you may have calcification, you want to get checked up and then either eat those foods or take the supplement. But this is the importance of understanding the human body and the role of vitamin K. Strong bones is not just calcium. It is calcium, it is D3, it's magnesium, it's vitamin K1 and K2, it's phosphorus and boron in small amounts. This is all that goes into building solid bones. And I advise all of you to build solid bones because that's what you're going to need as you age. That's what you're going to need. And what else, what else does your bone need? Muscle. 
So train muscle, constantly train muscle. Whether you're 50, 70, 80, 90, you have the ability to move your body. I want you to train muscle with weights, your body weight, resistant bands, because it is an absolute myth and a dishonor to a disservice to society when people keep saying, take more calcium for stronger bones. Excess calcium will calcify in other parts of your body and cause you problems. The human body is so intelligent, it uses what it needs, but it needs to have the right intelligence to use it. So if I don't have K, do vitamin K, I cannot, I cannot make osteocalin work. I cannot make MGP work. And I need MGP and I need osteocalin for it to do the right job. You want calcium in the bones. You do not want it in soft tissue. For that, you need K2, K1 to stimulate osteocalin and to stimulate your matrix GLA protein. This is how the human body works. And these are the little details that you're going to have to get in when you're trying to fix yourself over and above medicine. Have a great day, everyone, and peace be with all of you. <music>